Okay. Continue on with our little project. We've gotten everything out from the inside. And running through our parts washer a little bit over there just to get the majority of goo out of it. And from there, we're going to go ahead and basically reshape somewhat the front nose of the Volvo case. Like I said before, we don't use the water pickups in here and since we don't use them, water will still come through this area up through here and shoot out against our transom basically like a little fire hose unless we block it off. And then we thought, well, if we're going to block it off, we might as well block it all off. So we just, we're going to tape this up, put some expansion foam in there, and we've already put our line down the middle. That's our center line, and then we're going to take our 32 grit disc and grinder, and basically we're just going to kind of feather this guy out a little bit, nice and smooth. And then we're going to do it back here also on the back side. Just going to taper these off like, like the trailing edge of a wing, just a little bit. And I figure it'll probably give us like, I don't know, a hundredth of a mile an hour. But, you know, like I said, it's free, so what the heck. And the case is a mess anyway, so before we take it out and use our grill cleaner, just regular old grill cleaner, that's what we like. You know, it's uh, environmentally friendly and it's a heavy degreaser, so it tends to clean up real well. We'll go ahead and uh, then do all the finishing work afterwards. But. Let's, uh, let's get started. That was cold. Only about 40 degrees out today. So we uh, got everything ground and then we had to go and do a serious washing on our cold day. An assortment of uh, our heavy duty grill cleaner by Zep over there you can get at the Home Depot. An assortment of brushes that we have uh, acquired including a toilet brush and a few other things. And we scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed until everything was just immaculately beautifully clean. And uh, while we were at it, we went ahead and did the, the midsection also. The main thing we really kind of concentrated on was making sure all the salt was out of all the holes. The through holes, not necessarily the ones that are in there. But uh, the through holes. And there's enough in this carpet now that's probably, uh, maybe we can fill a salt shaker. But... From there, we made sure all the burrs were gone, anything was wrong with the whole thing, and uh, we took care of that area. Knocked off anything that was bubbling, you know, paint-wise, which, of course, you know, after 20, 30 years, it's gonna, something's going to happen. And uh, now, after blowing everything out with our compressor, we've got it sitting in front of our big old space heater here, and it's going to sit there and bake for a good 10 or 12 hours. And, uh, make sure it's all nice and clean inside. But like I said, the main thing we're really concerned about is this race right here. Because that race runs on top of our bottom end here, and which brings us to back to our story at hand. We got ourselves a long time with a with a disc grinder. And uh, made sure everything was clean with our wire brush first. We uh, did all these areas, and also we did the inside very well around here. A lot of times they use like this plumbing sealant, 
Uh, it's best I've been told it's what it's called. I mean, they have this Permatex number that doesn't exist any longer. And by the experts, I've been told it's basically uh, your everyday plumbing, po uh, plumbing thread pipe dope. Uh, kind of a runnier version of it. But after about 20, 30 years, that stuff turns into, I don't know, like liquid metal almost. And that was one of the reasons we found with the steering fork over there having an issue. It was actually just because their plumbing putty had dried up so bad that it became an adhesive. But now we look back here at the backside. This is what I was talking about feathering. I mean, I don't, it's not a knife edge by a long shot, you know. It's a... Uh, just just a way of tapering it down I and mean, when it comes out of the factory they tend to be a whole lot more blunt and of course you know that's a factory way same out here with the skag just kind of trimming it down be sure to stay away from these areas here you want your your bearing case to uh, match up the way it's supposed to don't cut them anything there anything there because it's all supposed to be exactly the way it's supposed to be so we don't do that we put a bearing case back in and then anything that we find around the outside edge, then we'll go ahead and knock that down with a, with a disc grinder and just kind of feather it in a little bit. Just helps the water flow across and hit the prop because the prop edge is basically is right about here along this edge here and along that edge. So, I mean, it spins right there and it wants to suck up all the water it can. So, we're just trying to make it a little easier for it to do that. So, and with that also, we all the blind holes, we went ahead and cleared out. Sorry about my camera work here. But uh, along with our filling, we fill her in. Of course right there with our eight pound foam, which is hard as a rock now. You can't even chisel it out with a screwdriver if you wanted to. But we've also go ahead and after that we use our disc sander or our disc uh, wire wheel and we knock all the foam out of here, out of each one of these grooves. Then we go ahead and we fill it with JB Weld. And along with the bottom, there's also a drain hole out of the bottom here. And the main reason we put the foam in there is just for the fact of not keeping any, uh, not letting any water inside, so it doesn't ice and then bust these pieces out. And that's what the culprit of most uh, nose cone failures, which we're not a proponent of. It's just that's a whole other story entirely. But if you uh, to give you the three second version of it basically. Nose cones. Volvo's steer off this pivot right here, which this is where the steering fork is. If you stick a nose cone out further than the pivot, it's like when you push a stick through the water. It just it upsets the drive too much and just makes it not it push it doesn't it's not pushing any longer it's like I said it's like trying to push a stick through the water so you're leading by the nose that's the only way I can really explain it I've had a couple nose cones and I've never been a fan of them uh, last one I took off and basically just feathered it out like this one and found it basically because of this being the center of the drive or the driving you know pivot basically you any much further in any of this right here and you're already Pit steering by the nose, in which case then it wants to wobble and it doesn't make it nearly as stable as it should be. So, that's our plan. We need to uh, continue on, but as we continue on, these things here, especially this feathering and such, is going to take time. Then we're going to have to wait for setups and paints to dry and everything else. So that's one of the reasons why we go ahead and knock it out right away. And then as we're fooling with other things, you can do something for a couple hours and then go back to this for an hour and then just, you're not burning time by wait, sitting around waiting for something to be, you know, uh, cured or finished or what have you. But we're getting close to it now. A little more feathering and then we'll put a little primer on it and see how bad it looks. We're not looking for perfection by a long shot. It is an outdrive. It goes through the water in our case with uh, brackish water. Brackish water contains particulate. So we will uh, basically push a piece of metal through a liquid with particulate in it. it means that 
you know, uh, paint jobs really don't hold up so well around here. Not to mention that our boat ramp has about two and a half feet of water on a good day. So you're more than apt to do a little sandblasting on the bottom of it no matter what. So our next step will be to go for the bearing case and we'll be bouncing back and forth to these guys also. Just one thing to finish up here. And our steering port, which also has a water pickup tube in it. And of course we already filled in ours, which most cases you guys will never even fool with. But since our boat has a water pickup in the bottom, we didn't want water coming in through the, button, the intake take here. In which case, you know, you're pushing water through, in our case, 60, 65 mile an hour. Um, it'll go in this tube, up, up through the steering port, come out this little end here, it's just shaped like that, and you got it. It injects it, basically at the transom of a boat, like a fire hose, 65 mile an hour fire hose. And we even tried capping one off one time, but we came back and found it, it was, you know, a couple weeks later the cap was gone, or at least parts of it were gone. So, like I said, we, we tend to fill ours in, and we're going to do this two-part foam, and we're going to call it an evening. So, I don't want to add too much because we don't need anything. Stir up our little mixture here. And, uh... Worst case scenario, we won't make too big of a mess. And just as an FYI, um, we like to use, get on the floor here, and if we want to uh, stay off the concrete, we tend to want to do it on carpet. And all you have to do is go up to a carpet store and get some of their trash out of the out of their dumpster, which they probably appreciate because they don't have to pay for it to be removed. And, uh, you know, even if it's that kind of little nasty, I tend to look for commercial carpet like this. I just lay it out in my driveway and hose it off. I mean, they can't do that inside a building. Nobody wants that in their office building, but if you're just going to use it in your garage, why not? So, uh, you don't have to have bad knees and bad elbows by being down on the floor. I and mean, there's a lot of things you can do at a bench. There's a lot of things you can do, you know, all kinds of places. But uh, sometimes with these bigger items, you just need to get down and dirty with them and right on the floor. And uh, also, it helps pick up grease and all this other good stuff. And when it just gets oversaturated, out the door it goes. And uh, excuse me, and off off to a uh, carpet store for another piece. And uh, you just hose out and give it another try. But I'm going to put a couple things away and call it a night while this expands. <laughs> 